Welcome back, everyone, to part two's last episode of the Migut podcast, Melt Into Korea with us, where we discuss and discover the meaning behind Korean and public holidays. Today, we have a very special guest with us to discuss a very unique holiday called Hunger Day, celebrating in October. The word Hunger in Korean is the word for the Korean alphabet. So why does Korea celebrate their alphabet or their language? It might sound strange, right? In my case, we don't celebrate the English language in my home country, but I'm sure others would be curious too. Joining me today is a very special guest. And for viewers and listeners, they may be surprised as to how we casted them. So please give a warm welcome from France, Fabian. Oh. <laughs> welcome. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, first of all, it's an honor to meet you in person. We first did like a quick Zoom meeting. So mm. now that you're actually here, I want to give you a warm welcome. My pleasure. Uh, for our viewers and listeners who already probably know who you are, but just in case that they don't, can you give us a small introduction about yourself? Sure. So, hi guys, my name is Fabian Yoon. I'm from France. I have been living in Korea for a little bit over than 10 years now, and I'm working in Korea as an actor, entertainer. I also work as a guide in the Korean Contemporary History Museum in Seoul. And I also do tours in the five palaces of Seoul. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, so I do a lot of things related to history. I do uh, history lectures. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me yes. today. Yes, and actually, I, I see that you have a busy schedule, right? Giving these tours <laughs> and stuff. Can, yeah, kind, kind of. of uh, yeah, kind and of other, probably other um, activities and, and other shows and broadcasting too, maybe. So yeah. we're really lucky to have you here today. Mm, uh, yeah. Saturday night, you know, you should be maybe all home relaxing, right? But you're uh, here with yeah. us. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I'm always working. <laughs> oh, that's what I feel like. <laughs> and you said that, you know, you have a lot of interest in history and actually part of the mm -hmm. jobs that you do uh, doing those tours for, you know, I'm, I'm guessing for foreigners, but also for Koreans that are interested into learning yes. their history. Mostly Koreans, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. oh, it's in Korean, the tours. I mean, I do French, Korean, and oh, English, wow. but it's mostly Korean. Okay, and I just uh. want to clarify, how many languages do you speak? I speak, I would say, zero. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. I speak a bit of a few languages. A little bit of everything. Do you mind telling us? You know, I'm not going to ask you to actually speak it. I just. I speak a bit of French. Okay, uh, <laughs> a lot of French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, English, Korean, uh, Japanese, Spanish, Italian, and Arabic. That but, is yeah. really amazing. I wish I had your skills. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I'm a beginner in most of them. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I'm not going to test you, but I believe you. <laughs> And actually, just from that little snippet, I feel like we got to know you a lot already. And actually, I read that last mm -hmm. year you took the Korean history proficiency test. Yes. And not only did you pass with flying colors, but you're one of the top recipient in history as a non-Korean. Yes. That's crazy <laughs> to think. Like, how did you, did you expect that you would do well? Uh -huh. I, I'm guessing because you pr prepared a lot for it, right? Yeah, so... When did you actually take it? Do you, I, it's been a year year. now. It's been a so year, So okay. last year, yes. yeah, last summer. Mm, so it's okay. been, yeah, a little bit over a year now. So, yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, I've been interested in his Korean history right. for a while. So I read... I don't study much. I read lots of books I on feel Korean like, so history. You, I feel like that is studying, but you don't think it's studying. If it's studying it for like an exam or but for was. like <laughs> academic purpose, yeah. but that was not. It was just for like for fun, personal pleasure. Oh and then God. I academia to the highest level here. You enjoy uh, it. So I, I don't do things I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if I read these books, I respect that for, a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not good at studying. So. Uh, I'm not good either. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. So, so, what, yeah. so I'm guessing your interests mm -hmm. is what decided for you to take that exam. Uh, well, yes, yeah, so I've been interested in uh, Korean history for a while, and a lot of my friends, uh, they were always making jokes about like, 
how I should take this test because they <laughs> know you it's talk about it all the time or? because they know it's very difficult and uh, everything. Your Korean friends. Yeah, my Korean mm, friends. Okay. So one day I decided to go to the bookstore and check on like the um, so we call studying it books. Yeah, yeah Hangsan yeah. 능력 검정 시험. So right. on the like studying books and I realized that I couldn't even answer any of the questions. That was last year. That was yeah, beginning of last okay. year. And so I mean I knew a lot right. but I didn't know how to like answer these questions right, so right. I said okay no I want to answer this, this question this is a challenge this is a challenge you. that was mostly it. a challenge and to maybe myself. like I, I know from my experience mm -hmm. last year you know it was kind of really bad time for corona so you yeah. had a lot of time at home and exactly. maybe that also helped you motivated you to do it actually yeah you're totally right. that's, <laughs> oh, really? yeah that's the main motivation I would say I so I started studying in like around April so right. which was was when like corona broke out yeah, so we were terrible. Yeah. yeah we were staying home a lot and like a lot of work was cancelled because oh, exactly. like we we're not allowed together and everything. So I decided to take this time, use that time, opportunity. yeah, yeah. So I decided to study and then I passed the test. How then. how long did you study in April? Starting in April. So I studied for mm, I would say like two two months. Two or months. Something, something, That's yeah. still kind of short amount of time. Don't um, people study for a whole year or something like that? I mean, usually, yeah, Korean people because they have like for for jobs. Don't they have to take this? Test yeah, yeah. For a job so usually, well? you know, usually Korean people take this test for uh, when they want to go to like uh, like company. prestigious university oh. or uh, yeah to a company. Right, right. So they have to you know have and you to did gather it for all this. Fun. <laughs> I did it for yeah, I did it for fun. Mm. But now it helps me a lot because you know how in Korea they value like that's exactly uh, you like have tests. the proof. You now have I have the proof. proof. So yeah. actually, what I tell to people is that my skill in Korean history is exactly the same, like two years ago yeah. and now but now I have the test plus with a very good score right. so people are more oh I mean it's good at Korean yeah. history they saw before you. that I they had no clue <laughs> but actually my I'm skills sure they did. exactly the same oh, totally okay. like the test I mean maybe mm. it helps a lot but yeah. I see and when you just bought like the book and that's it you know how some people do they do some tutoring or like they mm. join some classes you you did mm. this all self-study no no I did yeah everything by myself wow yeah. two months and mm, yeah you took it only one time yes and and i'm sorry what was the score on that so this is uh out of 100 yes and i got uh 96. wow that yeah. is pretty much in at least this is a plus yeah the, in, in, in maybe in the us yeah i don't know well, yeah and in the us it is, yeah. it is a plus okay. yeah, yeah so yeah wait what it is, is it in in france or in korea is it like I a, mi a minus or it's... i don't know in france we usually count on 20. 20 okay yeah. 20 is the highest 20 is the highest so yeah. this is a 19 some yeah something, something like yeah that? something like that so that is <laughs> that is really impressive first of all because maybe maybe if i took this test i would just give up <laughs> or mm. maybe just get one or two answers does it is it like topic where it gets harder and harder for each question uh it doesn't get harder and harder but it's like uh you have like three kind of questions mm -hmm. so one point questions which mm -hmm. are like supposed to be the aces one but they're always tricky yeah <laughs> they're always the wording right? yeah and the three points questions are actually very hard for me because usually there is a big test yes. big text so as i'm not korean yeah even though I speak Korean, like my <laughs> yeah. reading skill is not that. Right, and right. you you can't read the whole text. You have to read yes. like in diagonal. Oh, diagonal. Uh, yeah. I don't get it. It's written it, diagonally. No, no, you can't read all the words because uh, you, you have don't to have to skim through it. Yeah, you have okay, to skim I through it. it. Otherwise, it. yeah, you don't have time. Uh, you have to read it quickly. Very and quickly. I guess just to wrap it up on the test portion, mm -hmm. um, you know, for anyone that's interested in history, you know, any foreigners or even Koreans interested yes. in history, not taking it for any purpose any yes. advice for them on taking them mm. i mean you prepared it in two months i think that's yeah. quite a short amount of mm. time so so my best advice for people who want to take the hanguk <laughs> sanangyokom yes would be to go on my youtube channel and oh. check on my video about <laughs> Everyone, <Hook tip>. google <laughs> yes and then you have all the tips of how i studied what are my like advice and everything? Okay, after we're done with the podcast, <laughs> I'm gonna check that out that's, and see if I can do that's it. That's definitely a promotion for my channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, listen to Fabian and make sure we check his YouTube channel to uh -huh. see how you can pass with flying colors like uh -huh. him on this test. So hopefully this really helps others if they're interested in history or interested in trying this mm -hmm. test and. 
again, you had said it earlier, you know, you, people already knew you kind of had that history knowledge, but now you have the actual proof exactly. and it's kind of acknowledged mm -hmm. through the government, whatever. And well, not only do now we know that you're interested in history, but you know, as a veteran foreigner living mm -hmm. in Korea and your fluency in Korean, uh, you are just the perfect guest for today's topic on Hunger Day. So again, thank you for being here with us and hopefully we have a good conversation for today. So let's dive into our topic for today, Hunger Day. So starting with some background on Hunger Day, as I mentioned in the beginning, Hunger means in Korean, the Korean alphabet. And Hunger Day was first celebrated in 1926. Mm -hmm. That's right. So actually, the uh, Hangul was created in the uh, 15th century, but mm. way before that, Korean people used to speak Korean. Right. They just didn't have their own like uh, letters. Yes. So they used to speak Korean, but they, when they were writing it, they would write it with uh, what we call Hanja, mm. which are like the Chinese characters, mm. I guess, Asian characters. Yes. So yeah, and then after that, they created their own alphabet, which mm. is called, as you said, Hangul. Right, so actually before um, this podcast, I find it interesting that back in the day, they spoke a similar language to now. Obviously, they had a little bit of a different accent back then when they were speaking Korean. However, the actual written language of Hangul or Korean wasn't until later. Mm -hmm. So the writing, as you said, of Hanja letters, it's, it's hard to imagine. For people learning Korean now, mm -hmm. you, know, it, you can actually spell it out like an alphabet and read it. But back then, it was completely different. Yeah, so... Actually, as you mentioned, it's very hard to learn the Hanja, the Chinese characters, because mm, right. it's you have a lot of strokes. Uh, I learned them myself, and I struggled a lot oh, yeah. because compared to Hangul, you know, you can learn like the Hangul alphabet in right. a day or in a few hours yes, if you're smart. Yes. And as for Chinese character, there's it takes years, yeah, right? Thousands and thousands. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they're it, like small pictures. Small that... pictures. Yeah, it's it's very hard. Mm. So it was not for everyone. Like right. obviously, like farmers who needed to work during the day, commoners, laborers, they didn't have time. Exactly. Uh, yeah, to to learn them, so they couldn't they couldn't write at the time. And uh, yeah, then the King Sejong invented the alphabet. Right, and as you had mentioned, you know, for the commoners, they they just needed some basic writing and reading. Like they weren't writing books or they weren't like researching or anything, but they did need to sometimes know the king's announcements, right? Or right. maybe some communal communication in writing and and reading. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have the resources to actually learn the Hanja characters back then because they were too busy. Yeah, that's why. So. That's when actually the Sejong Dewang, like the yeah. the King Sejong, actually decided to create an alphabet for the people. He was known mm. as uh, a king very close to uh, people. Right. So in Korean, we would say Emin Sasang, which is what like love for the people, oh, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So wow. he was very uh, well known for that. So a lot of uh, actually people who couldn't read had a lot of difficulties in their mm. daily lives. Uh, sometimes they would go to a judgment, they wouldn't even understand what was yeah, yeah uh, their sentence and everything. Mm -hmm. So I decided to uh, create that uh, alphabet, and that's how the alphabet was created and proclaimed it in uh, 1446. Ooh, wow. Yeah. That is quite a long time ago. That's a so, long time ago. So yeah. you can say Hangul is over 500 over years five. old. Yes. So, uh, so we call it in Korean. So this is Hunmin <laughs> Jeongeum. So uh, the characters are actually uh, made like similar to the shape of your mouth. Okay. So and your tongue when you actually pronounce the letter, right. which makes it very easy to learn at the beginning mm. because you can like kind of visualize your like tongue. Mouth yeah, and in your mouth it. when okay. you pronounce it. Yeah, as I said, it's very easy to learn. Within a day, you can basically know how to write and uh, read right. and uh, Does, is there a special meaning for this for this hunmin jeongum yes hunmin jeongum so you know each character has a signification mm -hmm. and uh, actually it means the correct or the proper sound for the instruction of the people ah. yeah. so hun would be like teach like instruction and min is the people 
Uh, yeah. Interesting. So actually, I've heard and know about King Sejong. I, I feel like if you're in Korea, you heard his name somewhere. You know, they yeah. praise him a lot. And maybe one of the most famous achievements, like he had very, he had many, right? Yes. But one of the most famous one is creating the Korean alphabet Hangul. Yes. If you can, maybe give us a little bit more about King Sejong. Yeah, so if you've been to Korea, you've probably seen the statue of yes. King Sejong in uh, Gwangwamun, yeah. right? So there is this huge uh, statue of him. So he's actually the only king in Korea to have the uh, character De in front of him. So oh. De means big. Okay. So this Hanja, is right? the great, yeah, the great, Sejong the great. Mm -hmm. So he was the fourth king of the Joseon dynasty. Right. And uh, yeah, he's considered as one of the most outstanding uh, Korean king of the wow. whole Joseon dynasty, which lasted for almost uh, 500 years too. Yeah. And yeah, he placed great emphasis on education. Mm. And also he did a lot of things for agriculture, uh, science. Mm. Uh, yes, if you go to the Gwangwamun, um, to the Gwangwamun area, you can see. So he had that um, scientific called Chang Yong He okay. worked with him and he created a lot of things like uh, Chuk Wugi. What's that, that? It's like the rain uh, gauge. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also uh, sundial. All right. Okay. A lot of, yeah. And oh, he created that. Yes. Mm, and okay. he made a lot of. Uh, a lot of progress in agriculture were made during. Uh, so he dipped dentist. in a lot of different diversity. Lot of, but yeah. the whole goal was for the common people. For the people. Mm -hmm. So, as for agriculture, before that, they had no kind of manual for agriculture. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so he decided to, so you know, Korea is, has different like landscape in the yes. whole country, yes. different like temperatures. The different and provinces every... have different, yeah. So he gathered all the information for each part of the of the country mm -hmm. and he made kind of a manual that is called wow. Nung Sar. Okay. It's kind of a like agriculture handbook, I would really? say. Really? So like what crops are like... Exactly. For... How to like make a Cultivate. better, yeah, ah. agriculture. He did all, he wrote this whole video yeah, for the he, people. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did a lot of things and he was like, he was very into studying. And mm -hmm. so what historian says is that he was always doing what we call today meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he yeah. was always like talking with uh, all the scholars. So besides and, being a king, he's more like a, a philosopher yeah. and like a scientist. He has many hats. In a it. lot of things, even mm. in music fields and everything. Entertainer? So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know about that, but maybe if I was living, if he was living mm. like today, maybe it would be like, I don't know, an entertainer or something. Really? Yeah. That would be amazing. I can't even imagine if King Sejong was here in the 21st century. A lot of stars, Maya. So it's no wonder that he, a lot of people in the Joseon dynasty and even now, up until now, mm -hmm. really respected him as a king. All right. So I want to ask a little bit more personal question with hunger. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, you know, when was the first time that kind of captured you to, or motivated you to learn Korean? Uh... Well, first of all, the first time I saw hunger, I was five years old because I started Taekwondo at that ah, age. Okay. And it was like printed out on my dobok. <gasps> okay. On the uniform. Back. Yeah, right. on my okay. uniform. Yeah. So I thought it was very, actually very pretty to my mm, eyes. So I was yeah. very intri what, interested. What kind of capture, like, like the circles and like the Yeah, lines. it means like as we use like, you know, the like Latin alphabet, mm, it's yeah. kind of exotic, I would say. Uh, okay, okay. And it right. looks very like... I don't know, like drawings. Yeah, like pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like small characters. Mm, so. But not as difficult as Chinese. Yeah. Though. That's like a lot of lines. Chinese looks like, oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's too much. Yeah, it's <laughs> too much like strokes. burdensome. <laughs> too much strokes, right. yeah. So this one was kind of, yeah, I was interested. And then I came to Korea and actually learned Korea. Uh, I actually learned uh, Korean alphabet, the Hangul, during my first trip to Korea. Actually, I didn't plan on staying, on staying in Korea. When was your first trip in Korea? That was in uh, 2007. 2007, so okay. Long, yeah, That's when you got inspired to actually learn the alphabet? Yeah, so a lot of people told me it was very easy mm -hmm. and I wanted to learn before I uh, go back to France. So right. I asked one of my friends to teach ah. me. So and I how think, long did you stay that first time? Uh, I stayed for a few months. Yeah, few two, months? two months, yeah, a couple so of months. So you had like a, a kind of like a fast-paced yeah. class 
Like <laughs> yeah, so my friend keep telling me that I could learn in one day,、mm-hmm. and for me that was like no, maybe he would tell her like a few weeks, maybe <laughs>、right. a few months. That's what you thought, yeah. Yeah, she put so much pressure on me, <laughs> and one day we went to that cafe, and、mm-hmm. I mean in three hours or something,、yeah. it was oh. You、oh, can read. It's actually not that hard. Yeah. You don't know what you're saying, but yeah, I thought I was smart, but actually it's not the case. <laughs> it's for everyone. It's everyone just that this is it. easy. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's just easy. Yeah. That's actually a really funny story.、Mm-hmm. And you know, how would you say like it took you years, weeks, months to actually feel comfortable in speaking Korean? Speaking Korean, well. Or,、um, or I guess what aspect of it was writing? It was easy, right? So writing, writing and reading、easy. was easy. Yes. So for speaking Korean, I would say so when I、uh, first I traveled here and、mm-hmm. then I went back to France. I graduated from college and、mm-hmm. then I came back to Korea.、Yes. I would say after six months because I、six、studied、months. like very intensively. In-、um, okay. I went to these like intensive course.、Uh, like、TV. the university courses, probably.、Yeah. At the language institutes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I took those like, are like ten weeks every day. Yeah, hours. five hours yeah. plus a lot of homework, homework. projects, yeah. discussions. Yeah, we've all been through this. <laughs> all the corners, <laughs> all the corners. So yeah,、right. so I made actually quite like rapid progress.、Mm, I would say、yeah. during the first weeks. So after yeah, a few few weeks, I could speak like I could introduce myself、mm. and talk about what I was doing, like basic sentences. I think I have a similar experience, and I think other people learning Korean,、mm-hmm. you know, this. Lear, like listening about the experiences that you had,、mm-hmm. I hope that encourages others. You know,、yeah. it only takes a day, yeah, it, or maybe even two, just to practice、yeah. maybe the vowels first and then、yeah. the consonants,、mm-hmm. and then eventually, you know, even if you don't know any basic Korean, you know, 안녕하세요, 저는 알렉스입니다. 이렇게 말하면 you can actually, you know, read it, yeah, and then. From reading it, you improve on your speaking、yeah. so easily. You definitely need to learn Hangul、uh, if you want to speak Korean. Exactly,、yeah. I think so. And the basic to start it is, you know, you had a friend that helped you,、mm-hmm. but with our resources online now、uh, and、yeah. videos too, YouTube can be your friend. It's even easier,、yeah. <laughs> and I hope people get inspired. Especially、yeah. Hangul Day is very important to the Korean people. It is. No wonder you know they celebrate it. It's easy to learn, and you know King Sejeon, the creator. Created this language for the common people,、mm-hmm. and you can see how easy it is learned for the common people. Right. So,、um, overall, we discussed how Hangul was made and the creator, King Sejeon, and our own experiences with learning Korean. So, however, this brings me to our next topic. You know, why should we celebrate Hangul Day? So, I during this、uh, preparing for this podcast did some research. There are UNESCO approved language days, but in reality, there are not many countries that actually celebrate their mother tongue within their country. So it is rather unique that Korea dedicates a whole day just for the language. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, so、uh, before the Hangul alphabet was、mm-hmm. created,、uh, Korean people were using Chinese characters or hanja to read and write,、mm-hmm. and、uh, it was difficult for、uh, like. General people, like common people, to、uh, like express their our thoughts, right? Writing their thoughts because they couldn't write it, right? Exactly. So only the yangban could write. What's yangban? The yangban are like the scholars, ah, the higher ed- educated people.、Mm, so they、okay. had to take that test, like、mm, the guago shiam,、right. the guago test.、Right. But、uh, Korean people, they needed an alphabet, their own alphabet,、mm-hmm. because people need to read and to know how to write for to, daily life. For、right? daily life,、yeah. and if you to have access to education,、mm-hmm. and、uh, yeah, and yeah, the Korean、uh, the Korean languages is totally different from the Chinese、uh, yeah, languages. Yeah, it's a totally different. I think that's、it's、maybe a, a breaking part of the culture, kind of、yes. separating into its own. Exactly. So they needed their own、mm-hmm. alphabet. And to build off on that in this way, transition from Hanja to Hangul, it increased the common pe- the literacy of the common people. Yeah. So King Sejong actually it was dedicated to national identity、mm-hmm. and、uh, cultural independence, which is another reason why、right. Hangul has a deep meaning in Korean history and Korean culture. Right. So because of that re- reason, now it really captures King Sejong's determination and dedication for the welfare of his people. Exactly, but actually, when Hangul was、uh, proclaimed, a lot of people were against it. You know, you would think like there's an easier language to learn.、Yes. People would be, you know, for it. Yes. So、mm, that's confusing. So the reason is that、uh, before the Hangul was created, 
only the educated people uh, had mm. access to education. I see. Okay. And、uh, access to education and also to privileges, a lot of privileges. <gasps> so、see. like the so, young man, they、uh, were kind of controlling the whole country, right, right. and they have a lot of like tax. <gasps> Uh, related yes. privileges, and、uh, you didn't go to the army.、Mm. A lot of privileges, so they were afraid that all the people would have access to this education, and like kind of threatening their position. Yeah, I would yeah. say I can see that. So you know, when you're on top, you don't want people like to、mm. like go over you. That's that's really hard because、yeah. the disparity between you know the elite and then the commoners, they want to keep it that way. That was the reason they kind of decide to. Ban or stop the education、yes. of hunger. Again, I can't、uh, imagine that as a commoner. Yeah, exactly.、Mm. So they didn't want people to、uh, have the access to this education. They didn't want people to know how to write and read. They, they wanted to keep the hanja. Plus,、mm. the hanja had been in Korea for a long time,、yeah. so it's not easy to change、exactly. like your kind of like all of a sudden. Routine, all of a sudden, change your alphabet. What?、Right? No, I、that's、know. Panic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't want to learn this new、mm. alphabet. So yeah, that's.、Uh, I, I huge, guess the main reason. One of the main, yeah, that's a yeah. huge reason.、Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, to think that at one point, hunger might not have even existed because it was banned, right? It, it was banned. Actually,、uh, a king actually banned it because he did、mm. a lot of bad things. <laughs> oh no! Okay. Yeah, and he didn't want people to know that.、Mm. So well, if, history can't always be good, right? You、yes. have to have someone stopping、yes. the good things. So actually, it was banned. Actually, until very recently, hunger was not used by a lot of people, even、uh, in Korea, because they use、oh. mostly hanja, right, right. like in newspaper.、Yes. And uh, even today,、uh, you can still find some hanja in the newspaper.、Mm. I think Korean kids learn it at school too. The basics. The、right. basics, yeah, the basics one. Actually, as you said, even currently now, you still see a lot of the Hanja characters、yes. uh, outside and in in, in like literacy like papers.、Yeah. And actually, I heard I'm not I'm not sure if this is true, but the older generation,、mm -hmm. the older generation actually knows a lot of They know, Hanja. Like people over maybe the one who had access to education,、mm. people over forty, they know a lot of Hanja. Yeah, almost、sure. actually the written Hanja that they、yes. used back then, even、yes. though the spoken was Korean. So it's interesting. It's You know, it's a very long time ago, but people still have a very huge tradition for hanja, and、mm -hmm. Hangul has, you know, modernized a lot of the common people be able to use it.、Mm -hmm. So it's really amazing this history of hanja and and the Hangul together. So through this, I think our viewers and our listeners they understand a lot better as to why Hangul is celebrated. The creation and the history is very meaningful and really embedded into、uh, Korean society now. So that kind of goes to our next question on actually Hunger Day. So,、mm -hmm. from, you've been here for you know almost a decade in Korea,、mm -hmm. and whenever Hunger Day kind of comes by, do you notice anything different on that day, or anything is celebrated? We rest. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a day off for everyone. It's a holiday. Yeah, it's a holiday. That's so true. Yeah, it's a public holiday. Yeah. So usually there is.、Uh, Uh, there are a lot of events. So、okay. as I work as an entertainer,、mm. usually I work on that day because there、oh, are a lot so of events. So there's no rest for you. <laughs> I mean, that's good. Work for me is、oh, good. Oh, that is so, good. Yeah, but you're always busy, so、yeah. you need a rest day one day. So I did a lot of things for the Hunger Day. I、oh, did、really? I I did a theater. I did a play. Oh wow! Like the Hunger Play, like two years ago. So kind of like、uh, um, memor memorializing, like celebrating that. Yeah,、thing. for the, celebrating.、Uh, yeah. So the play content was about the history. It was about like、uh, a foreign、yeah. student coming to Korea and learning Hunger. Oh, that's a cute story. Yeah, that's. Can we find this online? <laughs> Can we check it? No, that was just a play. So、oh, okay. we played in front of the president actually. <laughs> oh, that's really prestigious. Then what、yeah, was that? I'm sorry. Two years, three years. Ago. Oh, that was in two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Oh wow. Yep. That's fun. Yeah, that was fun. So they do a lot of、uh, events. Like sometimes, so you can see on、uh, Google. Yeah, yeah. So usually Google is written in Hangul、yeah. on that、oh, day. I think、yeah. I might have seen that back、yeah. before when I when I used Google, not、mm -hmm. in Korea, but and it's crazy because Hangul is like I I don't know. I think it's reflected all over because even、mm -hmm. I'm in the U.S. and I see it, so it's kind of universal. They、yeah. they actually recognize that they, day. It's、yeah. pretty big. There's a lot of promotion for、mm. uh, Hangul on that day. Like a lot of brands do like special 
like kind of hangul events yeah. and yeah a lot of promotion i think they are very proud of their language and yes. i understand and they that should be. they should right. be yeah it's yeah. a very it's very beautiful a very beautiful alphabet and i think that um i was hoping you know it's mm-hmm. actually not coming up soon but later this year we're filming this in yes. august but it's in october mm-hmm. and i heard mm-hmm. that like the events that you had mentioned maybe some festivals yes. or maybe some events but you know maybe we'll celebrate online this year i so. hope yes <laughs> or you know a lot of people are getting the vaccine now so mm-hmm. I'm, i'm i'm hoping things and they will get better and hopefully, hopefully yes yeah, <laughs> we can have some kind of celebration of our hangul day it will maybe be my first in korea here mm-hmm. so it'll be hopefully fun. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so actually we um covered a lot on today's episode on mm-hmm. Hangul's history, the reason for its creation, and its creator, King Sejeon. And to wrap it up, I really want to thank you, Fabian, for joining us today for today's episode. Uh, I know that it was you know, difficult for your busy schedule. You're in high demand, no, no. so <laughs> you're very popular, and we're really honored and thankful to have you here today. Thanks uh, for having me. Of course, and also I want to mention that it's a Saturday night, right? He should is, be rested, yes. <laughs> and we're out here working. So thank you to our crew as well for being here. Um, how was today? I wanted to know your feelings on talking about history, Hangul Day. and being on Miku podcast. So actually I have a lot of uh, occasion to talk about Hangul in Korean, in <laughs> Korean TV show and everything, yeah. but I don't think I had the opportunity to talk about uh, Hangul in uh, English Ooh. to like foreign yeah, like, yeah. viewers. We so might I be the first. Maybe, that's yeah, that's <laughs> a good opportunity and I hope that Uh, maybe in the years to come, I think a lot of people are getting more and more interested That's in right. Korea and also in Korean language. And uh, if you want to learn Korean language, you need to learn Korean alphabet. Mm-hmm, so definitely. obviously, I think a lot of people in the years, in the coming years, will learn uh, Hangul. So yeah, it's a beautiful language. So I hope a lot of people can uh, start their uh, Korean like uh, kind of travel, yeah, uh, starting by soon. learning uh, Hangul. I agree, and as we had mentioned earlier, you know, it. I hope this motivates people, right? Yes. You can learn it in one day. You can and, learn in one day. You know, day. we're doing, we're in a a kind of period where we spend a lot of time at home, right? Yes. So this might be a good opportunity to take this chance one day, one week to learn Korean, and in the future, we hope to see you guys soon yes. in Korea as well and use that language. Mm-hmm. And actually, uh, Fabian, I'm so glad that you made it out here. And hopefully in the future, um, we're able to do some more collaborations on, you know, maybe in English, maybe in Korean too, or maybe French. It would be really fun to promote this kind of history and bring awareness to foreigners out there and Koreans to discover more about history. Mm-hmm. So this concludes our last episode of part two with Hangul Day celebrating on October 9th. And I hope all you guys out there were able to understand why Korea celebrates its language and how significant it is to its society. Next week, we will start part three, the Human Library series, introducing foreigners who played an important role in Korean history. Thank you, everyone, for watching up until now, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.